So the purpose of this video is to take you through some of the wiring methods between the NES RGB from Tim Worthington, or ETIM, and the NES IO from The Real Phoenix. This is the NES IO no-cut, uh, which is a really clever design that lets you preserve the original case without having to hack away any of the plastic, so it's entirely reversible. Uh, not that I'm ever going to reverse it, but if a better mod comes out, something along those lines, you haven't already destroyed your case. Um, it uses a Genesis Model 2 or Mega Drive 2 style uh, mini DIN for RGB and audio. It also gives you S-Video, replaces the power circuit with something a little more modern, uh, and uh, gives you composite RCA, uh, which actually preserves the original connection, um, and mono audio RCA. So really cool design, uh, like it a lot, I'm a huge fan of that, I'm a huge fan of any mod that lets you uh, preserve the original hardware and reverse it if you ever wanted to. But uh, there's a little bit of information lacking out there on how to wire these two up. There's plenty of videos on how to you know, desolder your PPU and solder in the, uh, the NES RGB, so I'll link to some of those below. Uh, but there is a little bit of clarity lacking on how to specifically wire up these two specific pieces of hardware. So let me take you through that. Um, so let's go ahead and zoom in and get down to this first set of terminals. Uh, I'm going to put my, my wiring chart between the NES RGB, the NES IO, and the NES motherboard up on the screen here. You know, pause this, refer back to this, um, but this will let you follow along with what I did. So to start, this pin in the bottom right, this is always an Oscar. That's our mono audio, and that's going to the mono terminal on the NES IO. That is part of this this cable here. Uh, this cable is a four conductor plus a shield. Uh, now you may be wondering where's the shield? I cut it. Uh, the reason for that is when you have a shielded cable you should only ground it on one end. Uh, and the reason for that is if you ground it on both ends and you have a potential difference in the ground you can wind up with what's called a ground loop where current flows through the ground and that introduces EMI which will then manifest as static on the video or the audio line. So don't want that. Let's ground it one end only. All right. Great, moving on. We have this white and this red, which are Alpha and Bravo respectively, A and B. Those go up here to the U6 CPU, pin one and two. I tap into those on the resistor where it's a lot easier to get to. You can see it's a nice, clean, straight run. The more wire you use, the more risk of EMI or interference, so keep it short, keep it clean. Next up, we have this ground. Uh, again, we are not using that, so let's keep moving. Now we have this white wire. That's on C, as in Charlie. That is our chroma, or color. It's used for us video. So C is going to go to CR on the NES IO. Next, we have this yellow wire. That is on Y, as in Yankee. That is our luma, our intensity. So Y on the NES IO goes to Y on the RGB, so Y to Y. Last, we have this black wire. Uh, this is on V as in Victor. That is our composite video, and that is gonna go to V slash PV on the IO. So that's basically your audio, your, your composite video, and your S video in one cable. This cable is our RGB in sync. Uh, and we start with this white wire, the white wire is B is in Bravo, that's our blue. Uh, the black is our green is in Golf, uh, or G is in Golf, that's our green. And then we have our red wire, which is our red, conveniently enough. Uh, so that connects to the R as in Roger on both sides. And then lastly, we have our TTL composite sync. That's our yellow wire here. That is on the CS pound or CS uh, uh, number sign uh, terminal. And that's gonna go to the CS terminal without the pound sign on the IO. So CS pound to CS. PPUV, we're not using that. That is a, uh, it's a buffered composite video from the PPU. We can ignore that. Uh, ground, we can ignore. This one, very important that you wire this up. This is our five volt power. So we are gonna steal five volt from the power supply. 
Uh, I use the middle terminal right here, which is 5 volt, and I use a little beefier wire. I think that's a, a 20, maybe a 22 gauge. Give a little bit bigger thickness there, a little higher gauge for power. Um, we have this ground wire on this terminal. I use the bigger gauge here. That actually goes back to the motherboard ground. You can kind of see it down in there. And then we have our 1, 2, and 3 for the pallet switching. So 1, 2, and 3. And those go to 1, 2, and 3 on the I.O. Now there's a few things that we need to modify on the NES RGB. Let's, uh, well, before we do that, let's talk uh, something that the NES RGB does for us, and that's give us 3.3 volt power. So we need to steal some 3.3 volt power from this VIA with a little white circle. So solder a wire on there, bring it back to the NES I.O. for 3.3 volt. So let's get back to our modifications. So our J5 jumper, that's for NTSC video, that needs to be jumpered out. Down here, we used to have four resistors in a row, just like this guy. There were three more here. I pop off those resistors. What I have to do is a big glob of solder, go right across that resistor all over it, pull it off, pull it off, and pull it off. Clean it up and then jump these out. You need continuity on those terminals. We don't want those resistors there. Uh, you also need to jump out J3 right here. And these capacitors, as described in other videos, you do need to move those. Uh, I don't like to bend them. I desolder them completely, bend the legs, then resolder them in. Much better, much lower risk. It only takes a second. It's going to save you a lot of headache if you make a mistake otherwise. But we got a few more connections to the motherboard. One is this ribbon right here, this, this two conductor you see. And that snakes under the RGB, comes out here, and goes down to our U6 CPU. The orange wire, that is going to pin 36. And that is our pulse. The yellow wire is going to, uh, oh, I'm sorry, orange is pin, uh, 39. That's pin 39. And this is pin 36. That's our yellow wire. So this is pulse, this is latch. And that's being used for our pallet switching on the NES IO. Very clever idea. We don't need a mechanical switch. We're using the reset button or the controller to change our pallet. Really cool because then it cuts down on one more penetration you have to make on the case. Again, it is called a no-cut mod. So we don't want to cut. Coming down here to the other side of the board, this brown wire is going to the gamepad one, controller one, player one, whatever you want to call it, the middle pin. You can also grab that from the U7 CPU pin two, but I think it's a little easier to grab it here. That's our data for the pallet switching from the controller. And then we have this red wire, and see these uh, go into a ribbon. The red wire is on the second connection of this big blue uh, uh, female side of the plug. This is the plug that goes out to the power and the reset switch. Uh, this is our reset out. So that's going to go to the out terminal on the NES IO. Now, uh, you'll notice these two are coming out from this side. These are actually the only two wires that you are going to want to come that way. All other wires that you solder onto this header here go that way so that they can come out over here and clear that shield. But these two are going to run down the other direction, the only two. Remember, that's data and out. So let's go ahead and flip this around. Look at the other side. So we have here a few ground connections. I used high gauge about 20 gauge or 22 gauge ground wires going from the motherboard to the NES IO. Uh, you can also see the shield ground back in here. Uh, what you want to do is twist that up, hit it with a little bit of uh, no clean flux, give a little bit of solder and then solder it to the ground terminal. Uh, you're not going to be able to see all those wires down in there, I apologize, but you'll be able to refer back to my chart to see what goes where. And then down here we have this JST plug. This doesn't come on the board, but you can buy these very, very low cost. 
Uh, you do need a crimping tool, but it's not very expensive and it's good to own. So you can solder that female plug in, um, and that allows you to uh, unplug those wires uh, instead of having to desolder them if you ever want to pull the motherboard out. Now, what are these wires? So this is going to the LED and the reset. So we have our, um, our green LED, red LED, common connection, um, and our uh, a reset to sense what that button is doing. So that is about it. Um, that's the entire uh, that's the entire setup here. You can see it's very clean. Uh, this is the, the whole motherboard. We don't have a lot of dangling wires. Any wires that we did have loose, we've taped down so they're secure. No hot glue anywhere. You don't need hot glue. As long as your solder joints are good and shiny, please do not use hot glue. Keep it simple, keep it clean. Make sure that you clear the shield when you reinstall the shield. Um, it does rest against the board in a few places, so you may have to move those wires around a little bit. That's why I left a little bit of slack, so you can bend that around. Uh, but once this is done, you can drop it in. We can connect these pins back together, and we can also connect um, the pin down here for our LED, and we are good to go. Thanks for watching.